And one of the reasons for that diversity goes all the way back to the Ice Age. During the Ice Age, glaciers made their way south across the North American continent. They pushed their way south, right into this area right here, and they stopped. They stopped, and then they regressed. They moved back up the continent. So it took all a bunch of plant and tree life that the glaciers had pushed ahead of it and deposited it right here in the Smoky Mountain area before it retreated. So we have a lot of plants and trees down here in the Smokies that you don't find again to get much further north. For example, if you go up to the top of Klingman's Dome, which is the highest point in the Smoky Mountains, almost exclusively spruce trees up there. And you don't start seeing spruce trees again until you get all the way up to Maine. They were pushed down here during the Ice Age. Wow. Another reason for our diversity is you may or not may or may not know that you're in a rainforest today. Great Smoky Mountain National Park is rainforest. And we're not a tropical rainforest. That's what most people think of when they hear rainforest. We're a temperate rainforest. And the difference being in a tropical rainforest, temperatures never drop below freezing. Out here we do. That makes us temperate. Up at the top of Mount Leconte, average rainfall exceeds 90 inches a year up there at the top. As soon as you get over 70, you're rainforest. So we're way past that. So that's another thing that factors into the diversity and the density and the lushness of the forest you have surrounding you right now. Now we also mentioned that the lumber companies owned most of this land or a lot of this land before the park was, was in place. So everything that you see around you right now was at one point cut down. Between 1900 and 1930, the lumber companies were out here cutting everything down. If they literally, if they could get their hands on it, they cut it down. So 80% of our half million acres out here in the park was cut down prior to formation of the park. So that means everything around you is less than 100 years old. Hang on. Steve, I got a question for you. Go for it. Do you see any bears while we through? We do. Yeah. Well, we see bears all the time out here. Now, this is not, oh, actually, this is the best. So we're going to Warren Fork. This is the place to see bear on a pink jeep. It's our best spot. Best spot in the park is Cade's Cove, but we don't go out there. This is the second best place in the park. And we have somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 bear out here in the park. We talked about the park being a little over half a million acres. Half a million acres is about 800 square miles, 1,600 into eight. That means we got two bear per square mile out here in the park. So they're definitely out here, but look how dense the forest is. So easy to miss them. So as we're driving around today, look for movement. Look for bushes that are moving. That's a lot of times your first indication. Look up in the trees. Their primary diet consists of nuts and berries. And they get a whole lot of that up in the trees, and they sleep up there, too. Oh, they sleep up. Do they hibernate? They don't do a, a textbook version of hibernation. They do a, a modified hibernation. Um, they will wake up during the course of the winter. If it warms up a little bit, they'll go out and forage a little bit. So they don't do a hard hibernation. They do kind of a twilight hibernation. So speaking of hibernation, mom will go into that pseudo hibernation. She'll come out in the spring with cubs anywhere between one and four. And uh, those cubs will spend an entire year with mom. We'll go back into hibernation that second winter, come back out the second spring, spend another six months with mom before they venture out on their own. So if you see cubs with their mom today, they're less than a year old. Those older ones have now separated from mom and are out on their own. Not sure what the backup is here at the moment, but 